Hi, I'm Teresa Frosini. And I'm Kyle Noonan, and this is Local Fair. It's a question we've all been asked before. Where do you want to eat tonight? Well, that's where we come in. We ask three everyday diners to suggest their favorite restaurant, then have the other two go for a visit and tell us what they think. That's right, we don't use professional restaurant critics. We use real people who have real opinions, and they tell us what's hot and what's not in the world of restaurants. So let's see what's cooking this week right here on Local Fair. As always, we're here at Bowl and Barrel. It's a great place to have a good time and the perfect spot for our reviewers to talk about this week's restaurants. So here's Teresa with this week's guest reviewers. Okay, so this week we brought in three people from the DFW area who suggested their favorite restaurant for the others to go visit, come back here, and tell us what they think. Our guests this week are Kenneth Nading, an attorney from Dallas who suggested Grace. Shannon Dubay, a consultant from Rice who suggested Sangria Tapas y Bar, and Vicki Scoggins, program manager from Corsicana, who wanted the group to try Alvernay's. Our first restaurant serves modern American classics in a comfortable contemporary setting that embodies Fort Worth's energy. Hi, I'm Adam Jones. You're at Grace Restaurant. We're at 777 Main in downtown Fort Worth. And I'm Blaine Staniford, the executive chef at Grace Restaurant. We are a modern steakhouse with a culinary team. Everything is made from scratch. We change the menu a minimum of four times a year, so keep it very seasonal. We try and use a lot of local products as close as possible. Sometimes we do have to go out of Texas for different items. The bar is clear glass, so it creates a nice energy. It's very open. There's actually two wine rooms. There's the visual one here on the side, and the whole linear part of the restaurant is also temperature controlled storage. And then the actual liquor beer wine side or the liquor side, Chef Blaine started and created through all of his fresh juices and good combinations of cocktails. At Grace, we wanted to create something that was a modern feel, but comfortable. And you can still talk to all your guests. The tables aren't too close together. Please come down and give us a try one evening. You really will enjoy it. Okay, so our first stop, Kenneth, is your choice, Grace, yes. over in Fort Worth. Let's talk a little bit about that restaurant. I really like Grace because when you're away, I live in Dallas, and when you're away from the Dallas area, I like to have a place that is amazing food, not necessarily trying to be too hip or too chic, but it's comfortable and just provides a fantastic meal. Sounds like it's not too pretentious either for- I would say not. For the chef that you have there. But it's, so still, it's still fine dining. It really mm -hmm. is fine dining. It's a wonderful atmosphere, and they do have attention to detail. They, they really care about their craft. So when you go there, what are some of the things you like to get normally? Well, I'm a sucker for surf and turf. And mm -hmm. so the first time I went, the waiter suggested something that was off menu. And so I do suggest asking about that. Wow. Which was uh, any steak that you would normally order plus a half order of their scallops. Their scallops are to die for, but I do love a steak too, so. Wonderful. Any sides that come with it? Uh, you do have to order your sides. Okay. And I would suggest the potato galette. It is Ooh. just fantastic. Yum. And then did you have any dessert or anything else there? I mean, that's a, that's a pretty big meal already, but <laughs> did you oh, try anything else? Oh, I, I muddled forth. And <laughs> uh, their strawberry shortcake is a wonderful end to that, especially if you're having a heavier meal like I did. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's light. It's full of flavor. Uh, they use a Chantilly cream, and it's just wonderful. Mm, it sounds great. Vicki, how about for you? What did you have when you went? I had the burger and it was wonderful. We ate on the bar side and had a great cocktail to pair with that burger, so it was really good. So what was the cocktail that they, did the bartender like especially make something for you? Well, we asked about the different cocktails and um, I got the painkiller. Wow, it sounds <laughs> <good>. great. <laughs> it was very good, very oh, good. Really? <laughs> yes. well, were you yes. feeling any pain? Afterwards? No. <laughs> it works. It does. They it were very works. effective. Yes, it does. So you did the burger. How about, what, what did you have when you went? Well, I actually enjoyed her burger more than I did what I got. It was <laughs> really good. I had the um, the ribs, just a little order of the Bayback ribs, and they were really good, mm -hmm. but I really did enjoy her burger and shoestring fries more. They were really good. It was a it really was good. good burger. <laughs> All right, let's rate this one. We'll start with you, Vicki. On a scale from one to five, how, how would you rate it? I would say probably a four. And what was your favorite thing that you had between the burger, the shoestring fries, and the painkiller? <laughs> well, we also had a wonderful dessert. Mm. The dessert was uh, a pain peru, 
it was kind of like a French toast and it had caramel coconut, and it was, that was probably sauce. my favorite. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> and pineapple gelato, it was really good. It was. How would you rate this one? I'd give it about a four and a half because okay. the atmosphere was really good, the food was really good, and the service was great. So four and a half for me. And I know you enjoyed her burger. Was that the favorite thing that you had on the menu? Well, the dessert was <laughs> the really dessert was good, good, but I think my painkiller was probably <laughs> the best. <laughs> it was really the best drink I've had in a long time. Excellent. Really good. All right, I know you recommended this. Yes. How would you rate it, and what would be your favorite thing? Solid four, good four and a half. And I have to say their steak was fantastic. I forgot to order a sauce to go with the steak, mm -hmm. and I'm really glad I did that because they seasoned the steak perfectly. Ah, oh, wonderful. So. Excellent. Well, thanks for the recommendation. Yes. When we come back, we'll visit a place that allows you to explore regional cuisines and beverages from countries facing the Mediterranean Sea. Like a very traditional uh, place from, uh, from Spain. If you're looking for a truly unique entertainment experience, look no further than Bowl and Barrel, Dallas' only modern American restaurant and tavern complete with 15 state-of-the-art bowling lanes. Whether it's a casual date, a private party, or a corporate event, Bowl and Barrel is a great way to spend an afternoon or evening and the place everyone will be talking about the next day. Great food, great drinks, and great bowling. What are you waiting for? Let's roll. Bowl and Barrel, 8084 Park Lane, Dallas. Welcome to Escondida, my hill country inn on Medina Mountain. It's a place where you can walk in the woods, spend a day in the world-class spa, or just relax by the pool. You'll love the beautiful spacious rooms, the great food, and the peace and quiet. Come by yourself, with friends, or with that special person in your life. Escondida Resort and Spa, the hard part isn't getting here, it's leaving. Next week on Local Fair. Well, it's definitely a place I love to take my friends to go hang out. It was delicious. It was almost steak-like. They just kind of shaved at an angle. I'd say a five. I love those guys. I like what they're doing. You pull up and it's in a shopping center and you're like, wow, I just drove this far and it's, I don't know what to expect. Center. I had some cocktails, so I, I think that okay. counts. That counts. <laughs> it's all next week on Local Fair. Welcome back to Local Fair, where we take three regular DFW diners, have them suggest their favorite restaurant, have the other two go for a visit, and then they all come back here and tell us what they think. Shannon Dubé says, Sangria Tapasy Bar has a variety of tapas and fresh specials that provide a unique culinary experience every time you walk through the door. My name is Alejandro Perez. I'm the general manager of Sangria Tapasy Bar. We are located in Cole Avenue, Dallas, Texas. I say Spanish Eastern Mediterranean tapas, like very, very small plates. We recommended like uh, two to three tapas per person, do family style, you know, share everything. The bacon wrap dates is one of my favorite things. Garlic shrimp, so delicious. And of course the paella, it's one of the best paellas in town. We have uh, three different sangrias, the traditional red, which is kind of semi-sweet sangria. We also have the sparkling sangria, which is one of my favorite. And also the uh, pomegranate sangria, which is kind of dry sangria. We have full bar, so we can make any kind of cocktail. On Tuesday, we have half price off on any bottle of wine. Thursday, we have uh, Ladies Night, which is uh, all the kind of martinis, $5. We have brunch on Saturday and uh, Sunday, $2 for a glass of sangria and $10 for a pitcher of sangria. Okay, Shannon, you recommended Sangria Tapasi Bar. I did. Oh. What I like the most about this place is that it's a neighborhood, a little neighborhood spot, and I always eat on the patio. And of all the times I've eaten there, I haven't had the same thing twice. So oh, there's, wow, there's a lot of variety A then. lot of variety, and it's just fun to try the different items on the menu, and there's always a special. We didn't get the special the other day and regretted it um, because it looked really good. So you said you've never really had the same thing twice. What are some of the more popular tapas that they have there? Well, we had the, the shrimp and crab croquettes, and I think those are probably, there's a ham and cheese also that I've had, and, and I think they're probably one of the most popular. That and the bread that I believe you said you had. The bread, the flat the bread, bread, yeah. The very, very popular. And honey, and, uh, it was wonderful. Yeah. Now, do they have a different menu for brunch as they do 
for the regular yes, time? Yes, they do. And you guys did brunch. What, which I one did, did you? You did dinner. Okay. Yes. Excellent. And had duck confit and uh, the flatbread, mm -hmm. uh, the, the olives that they have are just phenomenal. Mm. Bacon wrap figs. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Gosh, yeah. it all sounds really good. I'm hungry now. How, let's talk about the sangria. How was how is that there? It was good. You can buy it either by the cup or by the pitcher. Okay. Everyone bought it by the pitcher. You yeah. should buy it by the pitcher. Really, it just oh, makes yeah. sense, right? Yeah, it's I mean, economical. it's sangrias. It's what it's called. You have to do it by yeah, the pitcher. Right. It's very good. The fresh fruit in the sangria is a really good mix. It was really, really good. We enjoyed it. Oh. Okay. What did you have when you when you went? The garlic shrimp in the sangria, of course. Ooh, yum, <laughs> garlic shrimp. That sounds wonderful. Now, do they have different kinds of sangria that you can choose from? Because sometimes there'll be a white and a red sangria in some places. Yes, they or... had a sparkling or the red. Mm -hmm. We had the red. Okay. From the brunch <laughs> menu, I believe. Uh, I think there's a bigger variety. Did you have? They also variety? have a vodka uh, infused sangria, and that was delicious. Really? That sounds wonderful. So, what would you say has been your favorite thing that you that you've had when you went there? It's hard to say, but probably the croquettes. Those are okay. really consistently very, very good. They're just really well made, and they come with an aioli sauce that I thought was really good, or, or a pesto, I guess, depending on which one you get. Very tasty. And you mentioned it's like a like a neighborhood place. What is the atmosphere or the dress like when you go in? You know, And it may be different brunch than it was for dinner, probably. It's always yeah. casual. Um, okay. We sat on the patio, and I've never sat inside. It's always been on the patio for me, but there was a man inside playing the violin and singing. So he was so good that I didn't know he was live until I walked in there. So yeah, it was, it was just really um, fun, open atmosphere. It was really uh, comfortable. Excellent. Let's rate this one. I know this was your choice. So let's, we'll start with you on a scale from one to five. I'm going to give it a five because I just it's always a new experience when I go. I always get to try something new. So it's still on high on my list. Excellent. And the croquettes uh, were the favorite. For croquettes you. were the favorite. All right. Kenneth, how about for you? I'd give it a three and a half. Okay. And I'd have to say, I mean, it's great for people watching and it's a wonderful atmosphere. Okay. Uh, I'd have to say that my favorite was the paella. Okay. Excellent. All right, how are you, Vicki? I'd have to give it a four, and my favorite was the sangria. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed the atmosphere good. also. Um, it was very laid back, Excellent. fun atmosphere. Great, well, thank you so much for recommending that. Sounds like a great place. When we come back, we'll visit a place where tender meat, generous portions, and a fabulous atmosphere create a staple high-end restaurant. Not unusual for have a celebrity to pop in at any given time. If you're looking for a truly unique entertainment experience, look no further than Bowl and Barrel, Dallas' only modern American restaurant and tavern complete with 15 state-of-the-art bowling lanes. Whether it's a casual date, a private party, or a corporate event, Bowl and Barrel is a great way to spend an afternoon or evening and the place everyone will be talking about the next day. Great food, great drinks, and great bowling. What are you waiting for? Let's roll. Bowl and Barrel, 8084 Park Lane, Dallas. Welcome back. With a ranch that raises cattle specifically for its steaks, it's easy to see why Albernay's is known as one of the top steakhouses in Dallas. Hi, my name is Brad Fuller. I'm the general manager here at Albernay's restaurant. We're at 4217 Oak Lawn in Dallas. We're steak and seafood. We specialize in prime beef fresh seafood flown in from Boston. Some of our steaks are locally sourced. We also locally source our pork chops. D Magazine has given us best filet in Dallas. The sea bass with the lobster risotto has been on our menu for 16 years. Crab cakes are wonderful. Coconut cream pie is by far the most popular dessert. We actually have an award-winning wine list with over 650 selections. The bar, really a, a cheers type atmosphere. We have a lot of regular clientele. It's more than a great steakhouse. The service, the high energy atmosphere, it's a great white tablecloth, fine dining restaurant, but still casual and comfortable enough for everyone to have fun and enjoy. Okay, Vicki, let's talk about Al Bernays. It's wonderful. <laughs> it is wonderful. <laughs> um, it's a great atmosphere to go for a date night, very elegant, but it's also a great atmosphere to go with a bunch of friends for brunch and have enjoy a few mimosas. And I never would think of it as a brunch place. Oh. 
Is a menu totally different for yes. brunch? Yes, it is. Um, and they bring out an a, a assortment of little breads from Empire mm -hmm. Bakery, and you have to try every little bread that's in the basket because it's so <laughs> good. We had them all. You tried them all. Cut them in half. <laughs> and what else did you guys have when you were there? I had the carne asada. Okay. It was very good. The, the beef was probably the best I've ever tasted in that. It was really um, just melt in your mouth. It was really good. The, those. Every piece of it, the hot sauce, the guacamole, it was all very, very good. No complaints. Kenneth, when did, did you go for brunch or did you go for a dinner? I went for a dinner, large group dinner, and it was divine. It was mm -hmm. absolutely divine. Uh, the steak I had, I, I believe I had it with an Oscar mm -hmm. top. Oh my goodness, they did it just right. Yeah. How about sides? Uh, sides, the, the corn, um, what was it? The corn, the crab, corn chowder. crab corn chowder. Amazing. Oh, <laughs> you yeah, had that too. We, yeah. we had it. You have to have so it. So tell me about <laughs> crab corn chowder. It sounds wonderful. Well, it was creamy, and mm -hmm. the the crab was nice chunk crab in it, and it was really. He said it was a signature dish of theirs. So I was going to ask yeah. since you had it, since you all tried he it. Also brought out a plate of sourdough bread. It was very fresh to dip in the he the said chowder. It was well really. It, it, it did mm. pair very well. The <laughs> sauce in it is just phenomenal. Uh, any other signature dishes that they recommended or drinks for you guys? Well, um, we had the coconut cream pie. That was very good. My waiter <laughs> insisted on it. He was very good. His name was Chris. He was very, very good. And he said, you can't leave here without trying this. And he was right. It was really, really? worth it. It was, was the so creamiest was coconut cream pie and yes. fluffy and light. It was really good. It was wonderful. The entire dessert menu. I mean, the, the, yeah. the menu in and of itself is pretty much food. Mm -hmm. yeah. but <laughs> But the dessert menu will really get you, get you going. I had the carrot cake, and it is best in town. Really? Yeah. Wow. Carrot cake. I'm gonna yeah. have to go back for that. Now you were mentioning the service was the great service. As well. Yeah, yeah. we had you know on the clock people filling our water and bringing us breads or whatever. I mean, the service was just wonderful. <laughs> now I know it can get busy. Did you make reservations or did you wait or what? Was there during, a long wait during dinner? I think you have to make reservations okay. because it is very very packed during dinner hour. It would but help. during sure. during brunch we didn't make reservations. And it was a light there crowd. Wasn't an option on the website, so we just we it. just went. Excellent. Do they have any signature brunch drinks there? Vicky had a mimosa. I had the mimosa. mimosa. Uh, it was very good. <laughs> nice, nice. How about for you guys? Did you do any drinks or cocktails or anything? We did a lot of wine. Okay. A whole lot of wine. They have an excellent selection, so that was that was very easy to pick. Excellent. All right, let's rate this one, Kenneth. I'm going to start with you. Scale from one to five, and then your favorite thing you had there. I'd give them a five. Great. And the carrot cake for sure. Really? Yeah. The dessert. I, how do you get to the dessert with all this great food? How about for you, Shane? I'd give them a five. I had nothing, could find nothing wrong with them. They were really great. That's and good. I think the coconut cream pie is probably going to be my favorite. I love the sweets though. Okay. All right. Um, definitely a five plus plus. <laughs> it was wonderful. Every I, I can't say anything was my favorite. It was all my favorite. You loved it all. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, that was all very good. Sounds like a win. A plus plus. All right. Thank you, Vicky. So, do you think you could make one of these dishes? Well, when we come back, our restaurant expert Kyle Noonan will walk you through his version of one of the meals we discussed today. Stay with us. If you're looking for a truly unique entertainment experience, look no further than Bowl and Barrel, Dallas' only modern American restaurant and tavern complete with 15 state-of-the-art bowling lanes. Whether it's a casual date, a private party, or a corporate event, Bowl and Barrel is a great way to spend an afternoon or evening and the place everyone will be talking about the next day. Great food, great drinks, and great bowling. What are you waiting for? Let's roll. Bowl and Barrel, 8084 Park Lane, Dallas. Welcome to Escondida, my hill country inn on Medina Mountain. It's a place where you can walk in the woods, spend a day in the world-class spa, or just relax by the pool. You'll love the beautiful spacious rooms, the great food, and the peace and quiet. Come by yourself, with friends, or with that special person in your life. Escondida Resort and Spa, the hard part isn't getting here, it's leaving.
All right, gang, welcome back. As always, we're here from the beautiful Landmark on Lover's Show Kitchen. And we talked about one thing in particular that really stood out tonight, and that is steak. And you're in Texas, you gotta learn how to cook a steak. It's how we eat, it's how we grew up. So let's get started. I'm gonna teach you how to make a restaurant quality steak over your cooktop at home. Now, in the oven, I have cranked up as high as your oven will go. This one's set at 550, and I have a cast iron skillet already getting hot in the pan. And we wanna get this thing smoking, smoking hot. While that's getting warmed, I'm gonna add a little bit of canola oil and then a chunk of butter. Now, the reason why you're gonna add both, the oil lets the butter cook at a higher temperature so it doesn't brown or burn, which will give a nasty flavor. And then the butter is just, you can't go wrong with that great butter flavor on a steak. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a few thyme sprigs and flavor that. Just let those hang out in the, in the butter and oil and get kind of an aromatic flavor in that pan going. Now, while that's, while that's getting hot, I'm gonna tell you about the cuts of meat we have. On this plate we have beautiful filet, which we're all familiar of, who doesn't love a great filet? In the middle we have a New York strip, and then on this side we have a ribeye. Now, the reason why I have three is to show you the difference. The ribeye is gonna be very fatty, very marbly, Great flavor, but if you want a leaner cut of meat, most people go towards the filet, which is your leanest cut. Now right in the middle, equal balance of flavor and fat, in my opinion, is the New York strip. So that's what we're gonna cook today. Now, one of the things I see most commonly done poorly is an under-seasoned steak. I'm gonna hit a lot of kosher salt on this steak and some black pepper on both sides. Get it again on this side. Whenever you don't think you have enough or whenever you think you have too much, keep adding more because you really are gonna have a tough time over seasoning a steak. Now, we've got this pan up to a good temperature. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these sprigs of thyme out and we can save those till the end. We'll put these aside here. Now we've got a great, you can smell that thyme coming off of that pan. And we're gonna drop that steak right in there. Now, here's one of the trickiest parts. Most people want to move around the steak, they want to fidget with it, they want to pat it. Don't do it, leave it alone, let it hang out for two minutes and we're going to flip it after two minutes and we're going to get a crisp sear, a nice beautiful crust all the way around that steak and it'll be a beautiful one. Okay, let's see if our patience has paid off. I've let it sit for two minutes undisturbed. Oh yeah, we've got a nice beautiful crust there. Now that crust is going to serve two, two purposes. One, it's going to lock in the juice, lock in that flavor. But two, it's gonna give it a nice crunch when you cut into it and eat it. It just really eats nicely. So we're gonna let it hang out for another two minutes. Okay, so it's been about two minutes. Let's see how we're doing. Oh yeah, we got a beautiful crust on there. Now, what I like to do, you can keep doing this every two minutes or so, but I'm gonna go ahead and pop it in the oven. Remember, we started out by heating that oven up to 550. I'm gonna pop it in the oven. And to get to a nice medium, medium rare, you're gonna go about four to five minutes in the oven. All right, so it's been four minutes. Let's check and see what we got here. Oh, that smells delicious and it looks perfect. Look at that crust on there. Now this is about 140 degrees, which is a nice medium, medium rare. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take it off of that hot pan to let, the, to let it stop cooking. Now we've had to have a little, little bit of patience. We've got a little bit more patience to show. We're gonna let it rest. Now we want it to rest to get the juices back into the meat. Let it relax, you know, this is a muscle so it's tight because it's got a lot of heat on it and we want it to kind of relax and rest. We, we do want it to rest but not get cold so I'm gonna cover it loosely with foil and let that chill out for about two, three minutes to let the juices really come back in. All right, so let's see if our patience has paid off. We've been letting it rest and you can tell the juices are already starting to come back in. Now lastly, I like to finish it off with a little bit of butter and you take that same beautiful double cream butter. So I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of that thyme that we saved from the beginning that we fried up to give it a little bit of color. And that is our final dish. Now, this is the best part. This is what we've been waiting for. This is the reason why we do what we do. And that's the taste. Oh, that's the perfect color. And it's so juicy. And let's see how we did. Mmm, melts in your mouth. It's salty, you get the butter flavor, you get that thyme punch at the end. That's exactly what a steak's all about. 
So if you would like to be a guest on Local Fair, visit us on our website at localfairdfw.com or check us out on Facebook or Twitter. As always, thanks for joining us and remember to get out and enjoy your local fair.